Today we want to talk about parallel lines and transversals. First, from the picture, lines M and N are parallel. The symbol for parallel lines is two straight lines going down. Parallel lines never touch. The distance between them is always the same. They will never intersect. Lines that intersect at right angles are called perpendicular lines. Hopefully you recall that from our introductory pre-3 activity. Line Y is called a transversal because it intersects two or more lines. When parallel lines are cut by a transversal, some special angle pairs are formed. These pairs are made up of congruent angles. Remember, congruent means equal. So if we know the measure of one of the angles, we would also then know the measure of the other. The symbol for congruent is a little squiggle over the equal sign. And also, let's remind ourselves from the previous introductory lesson that supplementaries angles are angles that add up to 180 degrees. As we discussed in our previous lesson, we have different types of angles. One of those pairs that we discussed was vertical angles. Vertical angles are angles that are opposite each other when lines intersect. Give some of the angle pairs of vertical angles in that above picture. So the angle pairs are angle 1 and angle 4, angle 2 and angle 3, angle 5 and angle 8, angle 6 and angle 7. But also remember in our last activity what we said was that these angle pairs are also congruent. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, angle 2 is on congruent to angle 3, angle 5 is congruent to angle 8, and angle 6 is congruent to angle 7. So just to recap, from the picture over here, when you have vertical angles, the angles that are opposite are congruent. The ones that are across from each other have the same angle degrees. Next we'll talk about corresponding angles. Corresponding angles lie on the same side of the transversal and in the same position. So let's name the angle pairs. So looking on the left side of the transversal we have two pairs of corresponding angles. Angle 1, which is in the upper left-hand corner of the upper parallel line, is in the same location as angle 5 in the lower parallel line. Angle 3, which is in the upper parallel line, lower left-hand corner, is in the same location as angle 7, which is in the lower parallel line, the lower left-hand corner. On the right-hand side, angle 2 is in the same location as angle 6, and angle 4 is in the same location as angle 8. And the other thing that we would like to notice here is these angles, just like the angle pairs for the vertical angles, are all congruent to each other. Next we want to talk about alternate interior angles. The word interior we usually refer to as inside. And how we're going to use that is the word inside meaning inside the parallel lines. Alternate interior angles are formed on the inside of the parallel lines and are opposite each other. So this angle here 
and the opposite on the other side of the transversal would be alternate interior angles. The other pair that would be formed here would be these two to go with these two. And using the picture from above, the alternate interior angle pairs are angle 3 and angle 6, angle 4, and angle 5. And again, as we're seeing with all these angle pairs, angle 3 is congruent to angle 6, angle 4 is congruent to angle 5. Next we want to talk about alternate exterior angles. The word exterior, when we are painting the house, exterior paint is for the outside of our house. So as we are looking at alternate exterior angles, we are now referring to the angles that are on the outside of the parallel lines and on the opposite sides of the transversal. So very similar to the alternate interior, where they are on the opposite side of the transversal, but on the inside, now the exterior angles are on the outside. So alternate exterior angles are angles formed on the outside of the parallel lines, and they are both on the opposite sides of the transversal. To go back to the picture from above, in this case, angle 1 is the angle pair with angle 8, and angle 2 is the angle pair to angle 7. Those would be our pairs of alternate exterior angles. And again, those angles are congruent to each other. So if we know angle 1, we now know angle 8. So how do we use all of this? Here's an example where we are asked to find the measures of angle 1 and 2 from the picture to the right. Well, here's some of the information that we know. Angle 1 and angle that we don't know the number of it, but the angle degrees of 110 are corresponding angles. So because angle 1 and angle 110 are corresponding angles, they sit in the same position on the two different parallel lines, they are corresponding, which means, the three dots mean therefore, therefore angle 1 is congruent to 110 degrees. Now using what we know from angle 2 and 1, angle 2 and angle 1 combine together to make supplementary angles. So angles 1 and 2 combine together to make supplementary angles, which we know from the previous lesson are 180 degrees. So if I know that angle 1 is 110 degrees, I can subtract that from the 180 degrees. So 180 minus the 110 gives me my 70 degrees, which means that angle 2 is 70 degrees. Now it's your turn. I want you to find the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 2 from the above picture. Make sure that when you give the angle degrees, you tell me a reason why that is the angle degrees. And so I'm going to give you a second. You want to press pause and then do the answer and then press it again and we'll go through the answers together. So because angle 1 and the 63 degrees given angle were corresponding angles, meaning they are in the same location on the different parallel sides, the lines, we also know that angle 1 is 63 degrees because they are corresponding angles. For angle 2, because angle 1 and 2 form supplementary angles, we can take 180 degrees and subtract what we said was angle 1, which was 63 degrees, to get our answer of 117 degrees. Now in this problem, we want to use all of the information that we know um, to find all of the angles, not just a few of them. So with the given picture to the side, which we are told are parallel lines, we want to find all the numbered angles. So here goes. Well, angle 1 is vertical 
to the angle which we were given of 75. So angle 1 is 75 degrees. Angle 4 is also 75 degrees. Now, there's a couple different ways that we can explain this one. Angle 4 is the alternate interior to the given angle of the 65, uh, 75 degrees. Excuse me. It is also corresponding to the angle 1. So we really have two reasons why we know that angle 4 is 75. Now, angle 6 has several reasons. Again, it is the alternate exterior to angle 1. It is the vertical angle to angle 4. It is the corresponding to the given angle of the 75. So 1, 4, 6, and the one that they gave us, the 75, are all congruent to 75. And again, there's lots of reasons that we can use them, not just 1 or 2. So now, to jump over to the other angles, 2, 3, 5, and 7, we first need to figure out what is the measure that we're looking at. Well, if I look at angles 1 and 2, I again see supplementary angles. I could also say that between 2 and our given angle 75, I also see supplementary angles. So either way, since they are both 75, if I take 180 and subtract that 75, I am going to get 105 degrees. So angle 2 is 105 degrees. Then to finish the rest, angle 3 is 105 degrees, angle 5 is 105 degrees, angle 7 is 105 degrees. So again, how I know this, angle 2 and angle 3 are vertical angles. So I can say that 3 is 105 because it's vertical to 2. I also could say angle 5 is now corresponding to 2, which means if 2 is 105, 5 is 105. I also can say that 7 is the alternate exterior to angle 2. So if angle 2 is 105, angle 7 is 105. I also know that 3 and 5 are alternate interior angles. So if one of them is 105, the other one is 105. 3 and 7 are corresponding angles. And then lastly, 5 and 7 are vertical angles. So lots of ways that we can get our number answers, but it's also important that we are able to give our reasonings for why. So we want to make sure that we understand the definitions and how we know that those are the angle measures that we are saying they are. So lastly, we have a photo of a portion of an airport. Describe the relationship between each pair of angles, angles 3 and 6 and angles 4 and 8. And again, if you would like to try this one, just hit pause on the video until you're ready. And then when you're ready, try it, and I will give you a few seconds before you can actually get the answer. So first, 3 and 6. Angles 3 and 6 are alternate exterior angles. Notice how they are both on the outside of the parallel lines. So exterior means outside, and they are on the opposite sides of the transversal. They are congruent, so angle 3 is congruent to angle 6. And for the second one, angles 4 and 8 are corresponding angles. They both lie in the same position on the two different parallel lines. In this case, 4 sits in the lower right-hand corner of the left-hand parallel line, Angle 8 also sits in the lower right-hand corner of the uh, line B of the other parallel line. Because they are corresponding angles, angle 4 is congruent to angle 8. And that's what you have for our parallel lines cut by the transversal. It's very important that we can find our angle measurements of these angles with these different angle pairs, but it's also important that we understand what types of angles we have, whether they are vertical, corresponding, supplementary, alternate exterior angles, alternate interior angles.